where is hey man what's up <laughs> what's up man <laughs> not much not much what is this thing a on week yeah is this this thing on what do you got is there man on? that's new i know right see my kids do watch my my stuff they're watching us at least at least my kids are watching us anyways i know i know for the viewers if uh if you hadn't seen our what was it last episode i think it was what, what was on our christmas wish list it might have been yeah two a couple, ago. couple episodes ago yeah yeah and uh you mentioned this super cool mic and how's it working how do you like it well this is the first time using it so hopefully you can hear me just fine and it stays up and running so it's similar to the other mic it just got other features that that one didn't and it seems to be okay we'll find out i guess so now i'm in the stone age so i'm gonna need to uh up my game a little bit <laughs> now i still have that mic it's behind me on the desk in which i'll use for videos when it's like hands and coin stuff because mm. the the other mic that i have is that that i've used for that is really really cheap which is, is fine but you can just tell the sound quality when i start using that mic over that yeti mic so now i have the yeti mic behind me and i actually recorded myself packaging up a package um so I had a little bit of video reference of it and I listened to it back because I was talking to myself during the whole thing, you know, kind of barely bitching that I had to do that anyways, but uh, it sounded really good. And it uh, sounds the boot, good. boot dryer, man, got a boot dryer too. A boot. Oh, you were talking about that. You got your boot dryer. Good stuff. You tried out yet? I know it's rainy up there right now. It's plugged in the garage right now. I plugged it in the day I got it. Very cool. Does it heat them up too, or is it just to dry them yeah. out? yeah it keeps them warm it keeps them warm so if they are wet it's going to dry them out and then uh cold days or whatever if you like me i'll leave my boots in the garage if i don't want to put on cold boots in the morning they either be, be on that or inside the house and the wife really don't like them inside the house so yeah open the garage is good that. on a nice warm dryer so be good to go and we got a roomba that's kind of nice. Ooh. Yeah, it's one of those high speed ones that uh I don't know. I'm guessing that they're all high speed by now, but it's nice, man. My wife is like, finally, we got dog hair everywhere. Yeah. Finally clean that crap up. So we ha we had one, but it wasn't a Roomba brand. It was mm -hmm. something we got from uh, her mother, my mother in law. And it worked good for a really long time, except a lot of cat we, we have a cat. Mm -hmm. A lot of cat hair and it would clog itself up. And then it would just get lost. Like it would, yeah, <laughs> it would awesome. just get lost. So we kind of parked it and we don't really use it that much anymore because it doesn't work the greatest on carpet more. We have a hardwood floor in the kitchen area. Um, so that it worked great for basically picking up stuff. But uh, as far as carpet, uh, we just run the vacuum. Right on. Well, guys, welcome to the Crucible. I'm Emil. I'm Polly. How you doing? Doing good, man. Guys, if you haven't already, make sure you follow us on uh, CrucibleLive.com. That's our website. Sign up for the mailing list. You get entered automatically to win a five ounce silver pour. Also, get on Instagram at the Crucible Podcast or on YouTube for the dedicated channel at the Crucible Dash Podcast. Three. I'm really hoping nobody guys. signed up because I know I'm signed up multiple times, and if I got to win it, I'll win it. That's just. <laughs> that'd oh, be well. funny man i do have to send it to you because you got to do your stampy thing yeah or if you want to yep. send me the stamp and i'm well and yeah well one way or the other but i'm definitely i'm getting a hold of that guy after the new year we talked again on instagram good stuff which good is stuff. coming up what do we got today happens to be december the 27th yeah guys we're we're talking goals we're talking new year's resolutions maybe Ooh, maybe man <laughs> maybe 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 well what, what's what's good about a resolution i think um i feel like it it it's a start to a new year. It's a good breaking point to where you can, you know, start fresh. Yeah. You might not follow through with all of them, but at least yeah. you started right. I know yeah. a year ago today, or actually it would have been two years ago today. Uh, I started doing P 90 X and I actually got all the way through 90 days of it. And I looked cut and lean and everything. I looked good. And then I, I let it go by the wayside after that. And I fluffed right back up. So what did that, what did that entail though? What, what is that? Is that a diet? Is it exercising? Is it both? What are you cutting out? What do you have to do? I guess right. I've heard about it. I've heard yeah, about it. 
it's just a like a DVD video series, right? And you're it puts you on a regimen of like, you know, on this day you do this video and that day you do that video and you kind of follow the sequence for 90 days. And I think what naturally happens is right about a week or two into it, mind you, your body's in pain because you're like, I haven't done crap yeah. like this in a long time and now my body hurts. But um, but what it makes you want to do is it makes you want to eat better because you're like, right. if I'm doing all this work, I'm not going to like be eating cheeseburgers and, you know, ice cream every day. I want to actually see the results. Fun so, fact, I just ate a bowl of ice cream before we started this. What flavor? Uh, cookies and cream. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the the top 10 flavors in the world of ice cream. But um, anyways, the, the it makes you want to eat better. So you you do start to see the results and you, you're you supposed to take weekly photos of yourself in like, like a couple different positions just to kind of highlight your progress and you see the progress and you're like, okay, there's definitely a difference. So uh -huh. some people go on and repeat the cycle and do like another 90 days or, you know, several of them back to back. I didn't do any of that, but, um, but yeah, so we're talking goals guys. I mean, the thing is you can, you can go from nothing to having achieved your goal within a period of time. And a lot of times people like to break it up into years and that's an easy way to do it. So I don't know. Should and we jump right that, into it? Well, that goes right along with stacking too, man. I mean, a lot of people have goals and sometimes they don't they don't uh, finish those goals because life happens. And that again is is okay because you can try and accomplish it the following year or the following year. Um as far as any, new year, any stacking I don't, goals? Well, I, I do. I, I do I I and when we talked earlier, um I, I thought about it. So for the past couple of years just on the the youtube channel i've challenged the viewers to stack a minimum of one tenth ounce of gold per month for the calendar year so you'll have an ounce and two tenths by the end of the year and all that all that is is to keep somebody at a set goal you know what your you know what your price point's going to be at some point right depending on what the price of gold does you could be low 200s you could be mid 200s but most generally you're going to be right around that that price point right and it just keeps you keeps you going it keeps you motivated to try and store some of your money in into gold if it's something you want to do um my me personally i'm i'm going to continue doing that and probably make some type of announcement on the channel you know within the next few days or whatever but um me personally, I would like to challenge myself to get five full ounces of gold this year because we, we had a lot of projects going on and I, I did dip my toes into a lot of different collectible stuff this past year, which is fine because there was like the gods of Olympus, right? They came out with so many coins this, this past year, 2023, I think four, maybe even five, four for sure, but it's not cheap. You know, it's, it's not cheap and that again, that's not stacking. So I haven't really focused on silver in a while. I picked up a 10 ounce bar here or there throughout the year, but not, not as much as I used to because it just gets to be big and bulky. And I think we talked about that in the last episode, just the, the bulk of the matter. Once you start accumulating this stuff, um, where gold is much denser, it's got much more value and it doesn't take up as much room. Oh, yeah. I think you brought up a, a good point there that, you know, you're you're talking one tenth ounce yeah. and and it's really important to consider where you're at, like financially. You know, not everybody is. I mean, let's let's be honest. There's some people that make way more money than you or I. Mm -hmm. And they could they could be talking about stacking a kilo of gold a month. Yeah, that, that's their goal, you know. Yeah. And then there's somebody else to to who then sorry to them, uh, a tenth ounce of gold a month is an astronomical number that yeah. they can't realistically achieve. So it's really yeah. like identifying where you're at and knowing that, you know, you're, you're putting anything away. You're doing better than what 90% of the rest it, of the population. Exactly. And it's, you know, an ounce of silver is still an ounce of silver and that's what you can afford. Guess what? You're stacking. Yep. It's, you put an it, ounce away a week. Yeah. In four a year. ounces a month. There you yep. go. Yeah. It's, it's stacking. So don't ever, 
you know, let somebody shake a stick at you that you're not doing enough because you're doing what you can do. That's all. And that's, that's the whole part of it. If that's all you can afford is one ounce of silver a week or even one a month, it's going to take some time to stack up, but where could have that 25 or $35 gone that you wanted to save? It could have went anywhere. Yep. But Spokes. it didn't. It went into your Spokes safe. in a soda. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, uh, another good one is like an empty tube challenge. Go pick up yourself an empty tube. It doesn't matter what it is. Could be Britannia's, could be Eagles, could be Maples, could be Gold Buffaloes and fill it. See how long it takes you to fill it. Set a date, whichever one it is, write a date on it. And this is the date you want to have this filled by. See if you can do it. All right. And I think um, it's also important to consider not comparing yourself to anyone yes. else. Uh, yes. You, you got to start where you are. Right. And, yep. and just know that there are, no matter where you're at, there's people who wish they were in your shoes able to stack up what you're able to stack up. So, and that's, you know, I've talked about this with you on the side and I think on, even on the show, it's, it's one of the main reasons I don't go dumping a bunch of stuff on a desk because I, I know how people can react to seeing stuff like that. And they can put themselves in a, I need to buy now type of situation because look at all that stuff. Look at what he's got. I don't want to do that to somebody. I don't want to do that to somebody. And that's, I'll show a collection of gods of Olympus because what there might be eight or nine, 10 coins by now, but you, that, that I got those over the span of three years. You know, I think they started in 2020. Yeah. It was Zeus in 2020. So that's not, it's not a hell of a lot over three years, but it's, it's there, you know? Uh, yeah. Yeah. My stacking goal for 2024 is going to be transitioning a lot of those high premium pieces that I've acquired. Uh, I, I'll say in many cases, it was uh, foolishly acquired a shiny piece that looks cool. Yep. And I'm like, Oh, yep. I, I need to have it. Right. I need to have it. But in, in many cases you're paying over a hundred bucks an ounce for a piece of silver. And sure. When silver goes to a hundred bucks, great. I'm breaking even, but yep. uh, you're talking about those ultra high premium pieces that really are only, uh, attractive to a select group of collectors. Uh, it makes your, your buyer's pool much smaller. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm planning on transitioning out of many of those pieces. There's still a bunch that I'll keep, you know, keepsakes and things like that, but transitioning them to gold, just yep. like you, man, just like you yep. said. Yeah. And, and you, you brought up a point that, that, that Tommy made when we had him on here. Um, those pieces are nice. Mm. They are nice. And, stacking something else away kind of helps you hold on to those pieces longer. Now I, I, I get exactly what you're saying. Sell them. You're going to try and sell them, try and get some of that premium back, maybe break even, and then put it into something that's more liquid like gold that, you know, you could take anywhere and at least get spot depending on what that is at the time. Right. Right. Yep. Yep. I mean, it's, we all go through it. I've oh, been yeah. through it multiple times. I, I don't, I don't get much, I guess, what do you want to call it? Buyer's remorse because yeah. if I buy something now it's, it's because I wanted it. And, but it's not, not really high premium silver pieces anymore. And that's kind of what 2023 was about was just stick to some gold. You know, in 2022, we did again, the one tenth house challenge. I did that some months. I got a little more this year. I was actually fortunate enough to buy more than one tenth of an ounce per year or per, per month. The month of July, I bought that gold Buffalo and a half ounce Eagle just, just in that month. So that was really good, but I continued buying one tenth from there on. I didn't just stop because I said, I just bought an ounce and a half here. I'm good. I'm good for the year. No, you have to stick to what you, what I wanted to do was a minimum of one tenth ounce. That's awesome. And I did. That's really good. And, you know, you were talking about buyer's remorse. Um, I will say that I, I don't know that I've felt buyer's remorse from any precious metals purchases I've ever made because ultimately they do carry value sure. no matter what. So you'll always be able to offload them. Maybe not for exactly what you paid, but it's not something that's going to depreciate like crazy on you. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So, you know, as far as quote unquote resolutions, you know, I haven't really, I've, I don't think I've ever done it. 
I don't think oh, I've really? ever sat. Yeah, never. As far as that goes uh, in my personal life. I've like never saying, really starting January 1st, I'm going to do this. Never done the diet thing. Never done the workout thing. I mean, never said this to myself. I always, I've never really been a diet person to where, cause I don't, okay. I had a bowl of ice cream before we started, but I'm yeah. not going to eat the rest of the day. You know, I, I don't sit around and snack anymore. Um, I've never really been into lifting weights ever, even yeah, all through either. high school. I didn't play any really that physical. I played baseball, you know, I didn't even um, do that. and even then our, our, we didn't really have what you want to call a really decent weight room. Now that school has one of the best workout facilities you, you could look at for, for the area. And it goes to prove because our football team has been to the state finals however many years in a row, and then finally won a state championship this year. It's just dedication in that weight room and keeping yourself bigger, stronger, faster. We didn't have that. We had golf and baseball, which I, I like golf, but I never played it as a high school sport. Right. Um, so I don't know if that's something me and the wife should talk about because I don't know. Well, I've, know. I've got a, I've got a good one. My next one. And, and these are just, some of them are goals. Some of yeah. them are, are resolutions, right? So okay. as a goal, <clears throat> we uh, uh let me backtrack a little bit i think i mentioned to you uh viewers or listeners may have known this as well uh several years ago many years ago uh, my wife and i were involved with the amway business and you know there was some pros to it there's some cons to it but i'll say one of the the biggest pros to it was there was um a constant um pouring of like a positive mindset on things. And one okay. of the big, the big things that they always talked about was getting yourself out of debt. Like that's, that's really important thing is to get yourself out of debt. Uh, be a steward of your money, tell your money where to go. Cause if you don't tell your money where to go, it's going to leave. Right. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. knowing, knowing how to handle your money. And I'll say that for that period of time in our life, we did really good about paying off all our debts, putting money in the bank. And we saw positive net growth, uh, year over year. Uh, then once we left that aside, uh, we started to tumble into old habits, right? Which are very easy to do. Yes. Spending habits where you're just kind of like not really paying attention. And I'll say that, and, and think about this, man. So we were easily dropping 2000 a month on eating out mm -hmm. on fast, not fast food, man. We would go to restaurants, yeah. you know, yeah. I work from home. She's a stay at home. So we're like, all right, it's lunchtime. Let's go out to lunch. Right. And it was probably four or five days a week. We're going out to eat sometimes with the kids, sometimes without them. That's $2,000 a month. That's, that's an ounce of gold. That's yeah. it. You're yeah. talking about 10th of an ounce of, of gold. I'm talking, we could have bought an ounce of gold every month of yeah. last I'm year. Just on, just on going out eating money. Yep. Just on that. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's nice and it's fun to go out and to eat and you don't have to, you know, clean up your dishes and, you know, someone else yep. is catering to you and you can, you know, choose from anything on the menu. It's great. But, yep. you know, is it really worth it? And the other side of it is, have you really earned it? So one of the <laughs> things that one of the big flops, I'll say that we made last year was we bought a truck. All right. We had no car payments. We always pay for cash. Well, this time we didn't because yep. it was a nice truck and we're like, all right, well, if we're going to buy a vehicle, let's buy a brand new one that we know no one else has farted in it. You know, it's yeah. brand, brand new, right? 70 grand was the vehicle and we did put some down, but we're currently working on paying it off, but we're not going to do the minimum payments. We're going to aggressively pay it off because we'd like to have it paid off by this time next year, right? By the yep. end of next year or of 2024. Yep. And if we can shave it off even sooner, we'd actually like to start chipping away at the house because ultimately I'd like to have this house that we just bought. I'd like to have it paid off within about seven or eight years. Yeah. That's so. kind of the goal that with the addition that we have going on is the goal my wife has set. So this is why I'm working nonstop constantly over and over again, but that's what you have to do to, you know, manage those goals to, to knock those goals out of the park. You know, we bought that 25 acres that was paid off in three years. That was a, there was a Amazing. tight moment. One of those where like that just happened. Like we just bought this and now it's, it's ours essentially. I mean, it's really, I guess the government could come in and take it if they wanted to, but <laughs> it's, Over it does, it's, it body. doesn't, it doesn't belong to a bank at this point. Right. Good man. That's um, good. but yeah, I'm with you on the whole, um, 
the appreciated the depreciating asset of a new vehicle. But this is something that my wife and I have talked about many times is we we never we like having a new vehicle, a nice vehicle for getting around, right? So it started with a Yukon, a shoot, three, four, no, more than that. 2018, 2017, we bought one mm-hmm. and it was in a terrible rollover accident. Um, I think we had it, I think we had it two years and then the whole world was shutting down and I was lucky enough to buy a brand new pickup for 0% interest for whatever. And they, I was lucky they found the pickup and I bought that in 2020. Well, we only own that for a year, 16 months. And we decided, okay, this isn't right. We have to go back to a Yukon. And then that's what we have now. Well, this thing's getting ready to roll over 45,000 miles and we're looking at getting something different. So the whole point of that is we don't lease them we, we, we buy them, but we don't keep them very long because from what I've learned about vehicles, GMC Yukons hold their value. As far as that goes, we, when we came back from our anniversary trip in uh, August of this year, they were going to pay us much more than what we owed on that vehicle because they had buyers for that vehicle. And what we, and I I forget what we owed on the vehicle, but the interest rates are stupid. And again, we talked about this on the last one. The interest rate is stupid compared to what we have right now on, on this one. Right. Right. So it would, we, we, we we just couldn't see doing that. We couldn't see getting rid of it, even though they were going to pay us much more money than we owed on it to put down on another vehicle. And that that's another point, everything we've done, it's just a continuous cycle of, we're getting paid more for the vehicles than what we've owed on them. We put them on new ones. So essentially it's like leasing, just, it, just the loan just keeps getting transferred and transferred and transferred, but it's not, it's not a lease. We can drive the piss out of them without having any mile warrant, you know, mile overages or whatever. So Polly, that, that offer that they made for, uh, for your vehicle, when was that? How long ago? That was in August. In August. I yep. think things have shifted. And, and I say that because we also experienced the same thing. We bought a, uh, we bought a minivan, uh, several years ago, sold it for more than we got it. Then we bought another minivan, drove the crap out of that, sold it for more than we got it. And each time it was only by like a couple thousand. So we we were making more than what we owed on it, uh, which was nice. But then this last vehicle that I sold, uh, they, they had to undercut me because they said, you know, at this point people stop buying. So the, the car, the used car market, uh, used has, car market, right? Yeah. It's yep. kind of taken a hit. So, yep. yep. Yeah. It's things shift, you know, and it is what it is. Um, we'll figure it out. We're supposed to go to the dealership on Saturday. So we will see. I've Hold got out. no problem waiting until next August, but there you go. she gets antsy. Yeah. I know how that goes, man. <sighs> <laughs> All right, so we talked stacking, we talked um debt. Um I'm going to go in so this is this is personal to me. Uh I know that you said that you don't you don't necessarily prep too much, but I'm yeah, I'm right, a prepper, right. man. I'm a prepper. <laughs> so it for this cool. It's cool. For this next year, I want to get solar set up or at least start buying the components to solar, uh you know, a panel a month, something like that. Yep. Um and then eventually the inverter and battery cells and all that. So that, you know, hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have enough of the components to actually set up a uh, solar battery so, bank. Yeah. Solar battery bank. Yeah. So um, a friend just experienced a power outage uh, along the East Coast. And I am a, I don't know how to put this. I, I, I'll own an electric vehicle, you know, soon. Soon enough, right? So they messaged me and says, I'm out of power. How would I charge my electric vehicle? And I said, well, don't you have a whole house generator? And well, yes. I said, well, then you're really not out of power. You have a generator running your whole house. Why would you not think you could plug in that vehicle to keep it charged up? So, but then that got me thinking again is, well, not everybody can afford to jump in this whole electric vehicle thing 
and not everybody can afford to have whole house generators. So how would someone do that if the power's out and it's going to be out for an extended amount of time and you still need to travel back and forth to work, obviously an electric vehicle is not the ticket for you. So that's something I never thought about. That's Um, a good point. I don't think that's, that is discussed enough. Yeah. It is a great point. There's there's a lot of gray area when you start talking about that. There's there's a lot of pros to it, but then there are a lot of cons to it as well. Um, one, I guess, could be the expense, but it depends on well, where you're at. I think some of those companies have a service where they will send somebody to charge your vehicle if you're in like an emergency situation. So I'd imagine that might qualify. Power outage, you can't Possibly. charge your vehicle. Yeah. but But I'm sure there's some surcharge to that. You know. Sure, sure. Some crazy ass surcharge. So that that got me thinking. That got me thinking for sure um, about that type of situation is how easily that would be to leave somebody not able to go anywhere. You right. have no way to charge it. You can't go anywhere. Right. That's tough, man. Yeah. Yeah. You have any goals for the house or for the properties? <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, It's coming along. So just keep plugging away at that we're talking the okay i hope she doesn't watch so we're talking (laughs) um our our next step so it'd be cool if i had a picture but i don't we added an entryway coming into the house right and that's all brand new done and then you come into the house and that's all brand new done then you get into our what i call first living room you walk into my house and there's a first living room there's a fireplace there tv on the wall reclining chair couch that room is good like we may remove a wall in there but then it goes right into the kitchen dining room Hmm. we're talking about redoing that cabinets uh new counters new floor but then there's a sliding door where my kitchen table is okay there's a sliding door to the north which leads you outside so the north side of my house it leads you obviously going to the north but there's a sliding door there lead you out to a deck off the back of the house we want to remove that doorway put in like a french door and then add an addition off the back of the house basically like the deck but an enclosed room i don't want to really call it a florida room because the sun is to the south most of the day right and that would be on the north side of the house so that would just be a i guess call it a bonus room of sorts but an enclosed space outside of our house basically so that's something that we're kicking around i doubt i doubt anything like that will be done within the next year probably within the next five years is more reasonable right um so we'll be drafting plans and kicking around ideas and stuff like that because it is another it's another chunk of major construction and i would like to get it done before i decide to not have to put my boots on the boot warmer every night, you know, (laughs) and have it all done and paid for and then enjoy it at some point in time. That's good. So that's something we're definitely going to kick around and take our time with, but it's, it's slow process. Right on. Yeah. We've got our 20th anniversary coming up in just a couple months. And, um, because of that, we're having our, vow renewal at the house and there's going to be a whole bunch of renovations that need to get done before then dude dude, dude, dude. you got to train a chicken to bring the rings down yeah you know we were thinking about that no we're not we're not doing a whole ceremony it's just uh it's just gonna be a party really and we're calling it a vow renewal but it's really just a party uh just to celebrate but yeah it it would be cool to have like the chicken carrying you got to get the shoes you got to get the shoes i sent you yeah man yeah and i mean That would be neat. I will have some of the chickens out, but we have stuff we need to, I need to do part of the deck over. Uh, My wife's been doing a bunch of painting. We're probably going to rescreen the porch area. So we do have your porch is screened in. Yeah, we do have have a screen in porch. porch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's you got a lot of skeeters down that way. Uh, In the summertime, there's uh, this year wasn't bad because it didn't rain much. It was uh, terrible here, but the year prior was horrible. Yeah. And, And those suckers will drain you, man. They like me. Um, yeah yeah <laughs> it's they were bad for us this year but screened in is it's, it's a cool because you're still outside but you're not all buggy right yeah and i have to, actually have to say that when i lived in florida the mosquitoes weren't 
bad there, at least not where we lived. Um, they weren't as bad as they are up here in North Carolina. So, so kind of Florida is really think. dry, right? Unless you get into the, Florida's well, a swamp, man. well, I know, well, you can get where we stayed in like Orlando, Kissimmee area, right? Like that's not that swampy there and mm-hmm. really at all from, from what, where I've stayed and what I've noticed, it's just dry and hot and mm-hmm. yeah, it's, it gets, get some rain, but I know when you get outward yeah you're gonna get into the swamps we've been on some jet boat rides or air boat rides and stuff and yeah i mean i could see that area but in those areas you don't have all these resorts like you have in central area you know yeah now where we were where we lived uh it was like the boca raton um coral springs area that that area has canals everywhere everybody's got swimming pools half the people don't take care of their swimming pools yeah so yeah it gets pretty nasty but um but no, when we when we lived in Virginia or here in North Carolina, they have a different kind of mosquito. It's called the uh, Asian tiger mosquito. And those suckers hurt, man. And Ooh. they leave you with a welt for like a week and a half. The ones in Florida, they bite you. And by the next day, it's gone. You don't see right. anything. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. We Anyways. Got them, but <laughs> some, some years they'll carry away. Some years they don't. Right. So, no, some of my my other goals, aside from all that prep work for um, for the anniversary thing, uh, I do want to build one more chicken coop mm-hmm. and I got to finish that well. We did get 10 feet on that well. I was telling okay. you about it before. Yep. So we're yep. down to 15 now, 15 feet, and then we got 10 more to go. So okay. another two, three days of work and we should be able to get it down. It's just tiring, man. It's exhausting. Oh, I bet. Yeah. I bet. Well, yeah, that's going to be, that'd be a good one to get done. Yeah. And I think my last one, um, on, on board with what you were talking about before we were talking about P90X, I'm not going to do a whole workout regimen, anything like that. Uh, I do need to cut back on portions though, cause I do like second helpings. Uh, but <laughs> aside from that, just to go out and jog a little more, um, I don't mind jogging. I got a bum knee, so I can't go too yeah, fast. I'm I can't run. But uh, but I don't mind a good jog. I think after about, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes, you start to get that little runner's high and then it just doesn't hurt as much anymore. So, yeah, yeah, I used to I used to run quite a bit around here and I just kind of got out of it. I got well, I was training for like one of those five K's during our um, summer activities uptown. And in the morning, you go, you go run a 5K with a group of people. Well, that was the first time I've ever done it, but I trained for quite a bit running myself and doing it. I'm just not a runner, never been a runner. I mean, in short bursts, like I said, I played baseball, short bursts. Okay, I'm good. But to sit there and enjoy running two, three, four, five miles, yeah, it's good for the heart. But, man, I get bored. Right. I just get bored. Yeah, just you got to have bored. a good soundtrack, man. It's something, anything, I guess, which, whatever. I do um, just a little routine every morning, every night, just mm-hmm. something to keep me stretched out active push-ups sit-ups windmills jumping jacks run up and down the stairs here a few times but i don't like to get too crazy i should i should definitely get into a gym at some point in time and maybe hit some weights you know get get fit for 50 i guess i got 10 years I, i just need to limber up man i notice that like my joints get stiff if i don't stretch every day yeah i just need to work on limbering up I do. I stretch out. I stretch out. It's good, man. That's mobile, good. Mobile. Mobile. And I didn't mention this earlier, but to the viewers and listeners, uh, we want to hear your resolutions or goals for 2024, especially your stacking goals if you got them. Um, again, like we said, everybody starts off at a different level, a different place. That's and right. that's totally fine. So just let us know where you're at. And uh, you know, maybe there's some way that we can help motivate you to get there. That's right. Swift kicking the ass, anything. That's how I do it, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, no snow yet, man. No. Well, we talked about it months ago. We did get some first snow, but man, it's just miserable here. It's miserable right now. It's going into January. And it's dude. It's fifty degrees outside. It's fifty. I know, raining. man. I'm I'm literally I'm sweating in my office right. Like I don't know if you see me like popping my shirt. Popping shirt. <laughs> yeah. I got a long I'm sleeve sweating, on, dude. but. I'm sweating. Yeah, I don't even have, I don't have, I'm about to turn the AC on. It's oh, warm in here. Is it, what is it? 70? It, it, it's at least 70 in here. It's probably Damn. closer to 80. 
that's that's inside the office. I got my computer running and everything. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was it was a nice day today. Like I could go outside in the t-shirt, shorts, no problem. It, it was, was raining. Same, so. Yes, it was the same temperature Christmas day as it is today, and rainy, kind of misty, mug, um, like muggy, foggy. Right. <clears throat> we had the heat shut off. I had at least fifty people at the house here, and. It was 76 degrees in my house, Dang. heat off, windows open, just people in here just breathing heavy. <laughs> Mouth breathers. <laughs> well, you come to, yeah, yeah. Hopefully I not. said, I had, because uh, the guys and stuff are watching football in the front living room. Like I said, we got a table set up in there for people to eat and they're trying to watch football. I said, dude, I got three TVs downstairs playing football and nobody even knows what's going on down there. I said, hit the basement. <laughs> It's so nice and cool down there. Yep. You're missing out. You're missing out. I do miss basements, man. I haven't had a basement in probably a decade. When I we finished it. this thing off, we had one spring, and it won't happen again because we tiled everything around the house since this happened because we have a finished basement. We left to go to Florida, and we had somebody house sitting for us, my wife's nephew. Well, my nephew. No, it wasn't my wife's. It wasn't my nephew at the time. Um. And he calls us and says, um, your basement floor is soaked. I said, oh, no. oh, no. What are we going to do? This kid don't know what to do. So I call my dad and he says, yep, she's wet. <sighs> Gets a vacuum, vacuum what you can, start blowing. We had a company come in. We claim we claim something on our insurance. I don't know what, but we, we got lucky. The company came in. Everything was vacuumed up, dried up. And then they come back and did some mold testing and stuff and everything was good to go. Nothing oh, you're so got lucky, damaged. Man. Nothing you're so got lucky. damaged. We had it's carpeted. It's carpeted and everything was soaked from the point where it was coming into the house through the through the block walls or wherever it was coming in from. But uh, I mean, you walked and it was squish, squish, squish. I said, oh, no, oh, no. So it was September of 2011 and it was Hurricane Lee, which tracked through Florida and then it kind of like dispersed and turned into one solid line of rain and went right up the 95 corridor. And by right. going up the 95 corridor, it basically brought about four five, six days of rain nonstop right. in, into the whole D.C. area. My mom's basement got flooded. We were living in her basement at the time. We were so broke. Uh, oh, we were living in the basement and she got about this much water uh, on, on the bottom floor and it stayed there for days and days and days. Oh. And um, there was nothing we could do, man. We were like shop vacuuming it out, dumping it out. Didn't yeah. help. It kept coming in. So we no, ended up right. having to, We it was a finished basement. So we had to take all the walls out, took out all the studs and uh, and found out by doing that, that whoever had done the studs back in like the 80s did a terrible job. So, so that was awful. And then they put um, interior French draining in the whole thing. And that was like at least 10 grand. Now I'm sure it's probably closer to 20 to do something like that. Sure. But, uh, but they added a sump pump and everything. That was, it was nuts. And then we refinished, my wife and I refinished the whole basement. Uh, almost finished it before moving to Florida. But oh, it was work, man. Oh, that'd be a pain in the ass. Yeah. We had to redo all the electrical, all of it, man. I don't mind doing new electrical, but redoing somebody. No. Yeah. Know. Yeah. If I had a buddy like you, man, I would have just been calling you. <laughs> yeah. Right. I didn't know what the heck I was doing. Can't tell you how many times I zapped white my to thumb. white, black to black. Something like that. Right. <laughs> just ground it. You'll be good. <laughs> just put it on your tongue to see if it sparks. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't a battery. It's going to poke you. Yeah, man. <laughs> So yeah, man, that's that's my plan as far as stacking goes. Is I'm gonna buckle down and try and put away at least five more ounces of gold in 20. Good stuff, man. On top Good of stuff. some collectible silver, definitely gonna continue the collections and see what comes new. Uh, let's see, series I'm working on are the Gods of Olympus. I don't know when they're gonna end that. It sounds like there might be 12 or 14 in total. Mm. Okay, so then we have the Commander series, uh, five ounce. They, I I thought I heard there's gonna be a one ounce coin. I don't know if I'll get it. Maybe it'll be. We'll see. You're With talking five about ounce, the Napoleon one, right? Yeah. So I don't even have it around me. Um, I think I got one here. The five ounce and then the gold versions. I'm going to collect that whole series in five ounce and one tenth ounce gold. So that's going to be a yearly thing. 
And and that's another kind of goal is just, okay, you know, when they're going to come out, there's going to be three of them a year. Just tell myself, be ready to spend that money when the time comes. I'm hoping they do them like they did uh, the Napoleon. Yeah, right there. Do the silver and then give you some time and then drop the gold one. Yeah, your capsule didn't come all goofed up like mine did. Oh, yours came messed up? Yeah. Like a swirly, like a little swirl right in the center of it. Oh, that's no good. Um. Oh, and the new, which I have them. I just haven't even opened them up yet, though. Uh, what the hell are they called? The Zombox. So the oh, world domination. Neat. Yeah, so I'm basically buying those to just to give to my son one day. Um. I got the collector's box. It flips open, and then it's got a spot for the silver coin and or the silver round and the copper round, so you can stack them right next to each other and that's cool. run those out. <clears throat> so do those. I missed out on all the when they did the U.S. versions of Zombox, mm. so I'm not even going to attempt trying to backlog and buy those because some yeah, of those sure are premiums are crazy. Yeah, numbers. they are. They are. Uh, I don't know. You know, I just won Silver Heist had a Christmas special, kind of a, he put a coin into a cigar box and then he drew cards to see who went in order to pick a box first. Well, I got a Morgan, a Morgan dollar in my cigar box. Nice. So maybe I'll challenge myself and put that into a tube and fill that tube with Morgans, you know? something i'll come up with something morgans are solid man that's a good buy they definitely are they definitely yeah. are yeah, you really can't go wrong you know the that is something that i consider d depending on what it is the premium but that premium is damn near worth it they, they don't make them anymore they're not right i mean they do exactly. but it's not the same you know exactly. i didn't mean that they don't make them anymore u.s mints making them but they're not for circulation. They're collectible right. coins. And these aren't made for circulation anymore either. But you can go spend them as a dollar if you wanted to. Yes, you can. I would. Yes, you can. I would. Yeah. I would like to run into a little old lady, though, cashing them into the bank that wants a dollar bills back for them. Or I got 10 of these. Can I get a $10 bill? So have you experienced that before? I've heard about it. I've, oh. I've heard. And especially in the tellers where I'm at, that they've, they've had little old ladies come in and she, they're just sick of having these things and they're too heavy and they don't know what to do with them and they bring them to the bank and they give them paper currency back for them yep i uh my son had it he used to work at a bank and he had an experience like that where he had a little old lady she came in with um three morgans and a peace dollar uh, and some other stuff and she was yeah. like just turning it in like turning her coins in and he was like uh what do i do and the manager said you have to give them face value Yep. So he gave her four bucks and he just basically got a hundred dollars worth of coins. Right. Uh, or just about, you know, depending on their condition, they, they weren't fantastic, but nonetheless, they were silver. No, but they I'm were... paying $4 for them and slipping them in my pocket. I can guarantee you right. that. That's you right. know, I think my best experience was um, uh, when I lived in Florida. And if you know anything about Florida, people go there to retire. And when people retire, uh, they, they often, within a matter of a decade or two, uh, they'll pass away and leaving their estate to their children or grandchildren to settle. Right. So here's what I think happens. These kids or adults don't know what these things are worth. So they just take them to the bank and they're like, I don't even want to mess with it. Let me just go get, this looks like 50 bucks. So let me just go take this and see what the bank will give me. Yeah. And they change it in for cash. Well, I used to go well, on my days off, I would go bank to bank to bank to bank. Didn't even matter if it was my bank or not my bank. I wouldn't care. And I would ask these these people, you know, do you have any silver? Do you have any, uh, you know, half dollars that I can buy or any dollar coins that that you want to get rid of? And so there was this one bank. Uh, I don't even remember the name of it, um, but it was a small local bank. And the lady said, uh, do you bank with us? And I said, no. She says, uh, we can't. We can't give you the, what we've got. And then the lady in the back said, yes, we can. I don't want to count these suckers anymore because apparently they have to count them as part of their final count at the end of the day. And she okay. had them. She says she had them for, I don't know, a month or two months or something. She's like, please take them. <laughs> so she gave me six rolls and I'm like, all right, whatever. That was 60 bucks. It's $10 a roll for halves, right? I get them. I get them to the car and I peek into one 
and I see a walking Liberty half. Oh, like, oh, shoot. Oh, oh, so I was like old silver. Oh my God. So I didn't look at the rest, but I'm like shaking. I'm shaking. I get home and I start recording the kids. And I'm like, kids, each one of you gets, you know, two rolls. And between the three of them, they open the rolls. And we ended up with easily over a thousand dollars worth of silver for 60 bucks. Yeah. So they yeah. were all silver halves. There were maybe, maybe eight coins that were not silver. Were not. And there was maybe, I don't know, $3 face of 40%. And the rest was all Kennedy's, um, Benjamin Franklin's, and Oh, Walking yeah, Liberty's. total score. So, total yeah, it was score. a huge score. Wow. Very nice. Just hit. imagine what she counted before that, though. You know, she was sick of counting them. Yeah. Yeah, she was Just sick of counting them. <laughs> Just take them. But they don't know the difference. They don't know what that stuff is, man. No, and if they did, she wouldn't have said, she wouldn't have said that. She would have been paying for them herself, you know. Yep that's that's a strange thing yep so anyways there's still lots of silver to be found uh for those who who still go bank roll hunting or bank coin hunting there's a lot to be found you just gotta just gotta do it you gotta be able to put the work in yep cool man this is yeah, a fun dude. fun little episode yeah man it's coming it's coming new year's is coming and i think the next time uh we're on air it'll be 2024 it will it will it will be we'll have great great new shows for you for all of 2024 stay tuned don't forget to subscribe to uh the crucible on instagram it's at the crucible podcast youtube is at the crucible dash podcast and our website www.cruciblelive.com all right man fun show we will see you all on the next one